Hello. Okay, so we're continuing with bipolar disorder. Now, I'm in my classroom, so they just made an announcement that the fire alarm might go off for testing. So if it does, I'm going to pause. All right, so with bipolar disorder, you have two phases, if you will. You have your mania and your depression. So within your manic episodes, this is like a continuous elation that's out of proportion to the setting um, that causes irritability, very high and sustained levels of energy, and very expansive mood. So the person can go on and on and on without days of sleep, and they still feel like they can continuously still go. So during one of these manic episodes, a person exhibits three or more of the following. So in order to have the diagnosis, they have to have at least three of these um, characteristics or symptoms. Grandiose or extreme high self-esteem. So during mania, their self-esteem is completely enlarged. Reduced sleep, like I said before, they're just like the Energizer buddy, Bunny. They can just keep on going. Um, increased talkativeness. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, flight of ideas or the feeling of racing thoughts. So the flight of ideas is like they've just got all these ideas that they can do and think of and accomplish, which is why a lot of corporate CEOs suffer with bipolar disorder and they do some of their greatest work during their manic phase. Uh, being easily distracted. Hmm? Oh, distracted. Uh, sometimes people think I have bipolar and I don't. They think I have ADHD. They think I have a lot of things. Tourette's, but I don't. It's just my personality. Um, heightened activity at school or work, physical agitation, and displaying poor judgment and engaging in activities that could have serious consequences. Specifically, one of the two of the biggest behaviors, um, somebody in their manic phase, is a lot of sex and a lot of spending. Those are two of the most prevalent. So with bipolar one, like you see, you can find this um, information on page 127. Annual preve prevalence for this is 0.6%. And then bipolar two, slightly a little more elevated at 0.08. What that is, it's just a little lessened version of bipolar one. Um, but with two, at least one major depressive episode lasting at least two weeks, as well as hypomanic episode, which means a little lessened of the version of mania, lasting a minimum of four days. All right, so in bipolar, they call this cycling. So some people with bipolar cycle between extreme highs and extreme lows of emotion and energy that could last for days, weeks, or even months. Periods of mania and depression may be brought on by life changes and stressors. And typically, mania lasts up to four months and depression up to six months. But that's just the mean, the average. Um, mania lasts less than the depression does. And some research suggests that it is only the first episode that tends to be triggered by some sort of life event. After that, no. All right, so when you look at the brain, this is the molecular, molecular psychiatry of the brain. So who gets the disorder? Well, we do know that, like schizophrenia, these disorders do run down, meaning genetic, but it doesn't mean that it's not also environmental factors. So over the course of a lifetime, about 0.8% of the American population will receive a diagnosis of bipolar 1, and then 1.1 1 .1 for bipolar 2. No gender, no gender differences. Uh, biological correlates of bipolar disorder are evidence from twin and adoption studies. Really does underscore the importance of genes because when you look, like I have talked about a lot, they do a lot of these genetic studies on twins because the importance of knowing genetics um, is that many of these adopted kids um, are reared in separate families. So that's very telling of multiple disorders. Um, adults who have first degree relative with bipolar disorder on average have a tenfold increase of developing that disorder themselves. So usually if 
you know, somebody has bipolar, I usually ask, okay, who has it, mom or dad? I, that's kind of where I go to. And then if nothing, then we dig further into their genes. All right, so environmental correlations, higher rate of bipolar disorder in high income countries, 1.4% than in low income, according to the APA. Some researchers hypothesize that exposure to viruses, poor nutrition, or stress during fetal development can basically spark biological events leading to the disorder. Okay, so this is, um, there's a little story about this lady right here that su suffers with schizophrenia. So now that we're moving on to schizophrenia, this is a lo loss of contact with reality that is severe and chronic. So this is not multiple personality disorder like some people think, which really is not even a diagnosis anymore. It's called DID. Um, with schizophrenia, there is this loss of contact with reality. The basic overall features are disturbances in thinking, perception, and language because of word salad. When someone is in a schizophrenic kind of mode, they might talk very differently, and they call that word salad. Psychotic symptoms include delusions and hallucinations. Those are your two main characteristics of schizophrenia. People often confuse this disorder, again, with DID. For some reason, a lot of people think that they split into different personalities, when in fact they do not. All right, so you have your positive and your negative symptoms. And some people are like, how are any symptoms positive? And basically that means it's an addition to. And the negative symptoms are a taking away. So your positive symptoms include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior, and then abnormal motor behavior. Your negative symptoms are your decreased emotional expression. So kind of like your flat affect, uh, lack of motivation, decreased speech production, so not a lot of talking, decreased functioning at work in social situations, and in self-care. A lot of people that suffer with schizophrenia going through their negative symptoms, they really just don't take care of them, themselves um, a lot of times in their hygiene. And then reduce pleasure and lack of interest in interacting with others. All right, so to be diagnosed with schizophrenia, a person must display symptoms for the majority of days in a one-month period and experience significant dysfunction in work, school, relationships, or personal care for at least six months. That's the kick. That's the kicker right there, folks, six months. So it is uncommon, only 0.3 to 1% lifetime risk. Although men and women appear to face it equal you know, risk, the onset of the disorder tends to occur earlier in men. And then schizophrenia is disproportionately, um, it affects people of lower socioeconomic classes. And again, it affects them more because people with schizophrenia, it's a very debilitating disease or disorder, I should say, and people from lower socioeconomic statuses don't, cannot afford to get the help that they need. This is an interesting study that I will just touch on. All of these four quadruplets all suffered with schizophrenia. So four sisters all suffered schizophrenia. You've got Nora, Iris, Myra, and Hester Ganane were identical quadruplets born in 1930. Each developed symptoms of schizophrenia between the ages of 22 and 24 years old. They're identical quads, nearly all the same genes. So the Ganane case suggests that there is some heritable component to schizophrenia. Wouldn't you think all four? I would think so. Um, yet each woman experienced the disorder in her own way, highlighting the importance of environmental factors <clears throat> or what they call nurture. So even though genetically they all are predisposed and did have schizophrenia, their symptomology was different. So this is just the breakdown in relationship to a person with schizophrenia, going from the general population all the way to identical twins where you can see this is the highest risk of development. Um, so again, highly heritable, 
genetic factors accounting for 60 to 80 percent of the population wide risk for developing the disorder. Usually when one parent has it, a person's risk of being di diagnosed with schizophrenia is 10 to 15 percent higher. Um, if both parents have schizophrenia, the risk jumps to 27 percent. Um, it's not caused by any single gene, but a combination of many genes interacting with the environment. All right, so looking at the diathesis stress model nested in the biopsychosocial approach, biogenetic, psycho-internal, and social surroundings. Um, this suggests that developing schizophrenia does have a genetic predisposition, but it also has those environmental triggers. Um, again, every chapter, you're going to see how every chapter relates to the brain. So with schizophrenia, thinning of the cortex, enlarged ventricles, reduced size may be tied to cognitive control. So when you look at the brain of somebody with schizophrenia, you can see a marked difference. Um, brain changes may, do, may be due to long-term medication use to treat schizophrenia rather than schizophrenia itself. All right, so moving on to autism. Now, autism more is a neurodevelopmental disorder, um, autism spectrum disorder characterized by persistent deficits. That means lack thereof, basically, in social communication, social interaction across multiple contexts, and restricted repetitive patterns of behavior, interest, or activities. Now, the, the repetitive behaviors can be a wide range of different things. It affects about 1 in 59 American children. It's four times more common in boys. And the causes of ASD are still under investigation, but research, obviously, again, is going that it runs in families. Looking at your personality disorders. All right, so those, you've got your cluster A, your cluster B, and your cluster C disorders. Cluster B, meaning the, the most difficult to treat, and I'll tell you why in a minute. All right, so someone with a personality disorder, they exhibit behaviors that deviate largely from the norm. Um, cognition, including perceptions of self, others, and events, emotional responses, interpersonal functioning, and impulse control. These are all greatly affected with somebody with PD. Uh, to be diagnosed with a personality disorder, one must struggle with at least two of the four categories. So that means the four above they have to at least meet two of those criteria. And the DSM includes 10 different personality disorders. So here are the 10. You've got paranoid. This, is, this disorder, again, there is a huge distrust with people. No basis for the distrust. It's just, again, it's paranoia. Schizotypal also falls under the schizophrenia disorders. And this is detachment from relationships and limited range of emotional expression. So, again, this is not the delusions and hallucinations, but it does have, schiz it does have schizophrenia symptoms, so it, it may mimic or mirror that. Um, antisocial personality disorder doesn't mean like you're an antisocial person. Quite sometimes the opposite. They're very charming. Um, but unethical behavior, usually illegal behavior too, they're deceitful, they're impulsive, irritable, aggressive. Um, they disregard other people's feelings, and they have no remorse for anything that they have done to hurt somebody. Borderline, that's a very um, difficult disorder to treat. Uh, they have an incomplete sense of self, extreme self-criticism, constantly doubting themselves, unstable emotions, and feelings of emptiness. Histrionic personality disorder, think of somebody like Reg Regina George from Mean Girls, if you've ever seen that movie. She kind of exemplifies that personality disorder. So extreme emotions used to gain attention. Narcissistic personality disorder, again, it's overly stated. A lot of people say, oh, he's so narcissistic. She's so narcissistic. Honestly, you need to know the criteria to actually diagnose somebody with that. However, people may have those traits. A lot of people have traits of a lot of things but they don't meet the disorder. All right, so they're very self-absorbed. They need to be admired. They lack empathy, and they just think that they're the best, and nobody's greater than them. 
um, avoidant personality, social self-consciousness, hypersensitivity um, to negative feedback. So these are people that avoid doing any kind of like outside things like, you know, giving presentations, anything that might cause somebody to judge them. So they avoid those situations. And then obsessive compulsive personality disorder, not con to be confused with OCD, but this is OCPD. And this is a fixation with order, perfection, and control. So this is all about personality. All right, so your ASPD, psychological disorder distinguished by unethical behavior, deceitfulness, impulsivity, irritability, aggressiveness, disregard for others, lack of remorse. Now, 1% to 4% of American adults are diagnosed with this, way more common in men than women. You're gonna find some personality disorders are more prevalent with men and others are more prevalent with females, like with borderline. Um, more common in men, according to some adults, up to 80% of prison inmates have received this diagnosis. Why, you ask? Because within this diagnosis, there is what is called socio, socio oh, why can I say it? Psychopathy and sociopathy. So sociopath and psychopath kind of run together, but they're very intermingling, but they do have different, different meanings, but they do go together. Um, sociopaths don't necessarily mean that they're going to kill somebody where a psychopath will. So this can just be a sociopath that just consistently lies and they gaslight. They do things to make you feel like you're crazy. Um, so that's a really interesting subject that if we were in class, probably would be digging into it more. Um, the etiology, hereditary, but no single gene is implicated, irregularities in the frontal lobe, complex interaction of genes, and the environment. Okay, your borderlines, 75% of those are female. So you're going to get majority of those are going to be diagnosed um, that are female. This is a disorder, again, incomplete sense of self, extreme self-criticism. They It's like self-loathing, self-hate. Um, the biopsychosocial model of development, childhood environment, so trauma and overprotective parents, so the helicopter parents kind of always in the business. That's one of the model or one of the causes they say. Temperament that includes impulsive behavior and emotional sensitivity. All right, skip that. Your dissociative disorders, formerly known as DID, formerly known as. Um, multiple personality disorder. The dissociative disorders, the classes, um, are distinguished by disturbances in normal psychological functioning, includes problems with memory, identity, consciousness, perception, and motor control. So with some of these, they can lose all sense of time, days, weeks, months, even years. Um, what they do is they dissociate. And this is usually characterized by somebody that went through major, major trauma, like childhood rape, um, assault, things like that. I mean, it happens young in life, typically. Um, it's a disturbance in the normally integrated experience of psychological functions involved in memory, consciousness, perception, and identity. You've got diso dissociative amnesia and fugue. With the amnesia, psychological disorder marked by difficulty remembering important personal information and life events. So due to the trauma, the person may forget certain events that happen, which makes sense because the brain literally, figuratively, I should say, fractures in a bunch of pieces. With fugue, it's a condition in which a person with dissociative amnesia or DID wanders about in a confused and unexpected manner. They're just kind of in a fog all over the place. DID itself is the most commonly of those disorders, used to be called multiple personality disorder, with the stigma name changed for the DSM-5. Um, it's the most complicated and persistent of the dissociative disorders. Key feature is lack of connection among behavior, awareness, memory, cognition, and other functioning. There's often a reported gap in remembering day-to-day -day events and personal information. And then the etiology, Clinician reinforcement of development of dissociations, often linked to childhood abuse and neglect, war and terrorism. So those are the main things that 
will cause DID, but more manifested in um, children. Moving to eating disorders, your main eating disorder, you have anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and then um, binge eating disorder, which is actually one of the newest eating disorders. Um, there are serious dysfunctions in eating behavior that can involve restricting food consumption, obsessing over weight or body shape, and eating too much and purging. Anorexia is the number one um, kind of leading uh, disorder caused in death due to malnutrition. Um, usually begins in the early teens and typically affects girls, though substantial portion of those do affect boys. Um, with anorexia, characterized by self-imposed restrictions on calories needed to maintain a healthy weight, even though it is not healthy in their mind, like you see in the picture, they're very thin. How they see themselves is larger. They have this disorder, distorted sense of what their body looks like, um, and they will only eat when absolutely necessary. Most of the time you can tell when somebody has anorexia, but not all the time because they can hide it by wearing baggy clothes. Um, with bulimia, this involves recurrent episodes of binge eating followed by purging to prevent weight. This also carries serious health, health risks um, because when you're when you're purging through your mouth, you are burning the lining of your esophagus. So the more you do it, you can get cancer and you can get to the point where acid reflux develops and then you can't even hold food down. And then people that, um, that take laxatives to get rid of it, it's kind of like uh, defeats the purpose because by the time usually that um, you use the laxatives and go, the body has already absorbed the food. So it doesn't really, there's no benefit. And really there's no benefit at all, but I'm just kind of giving you some knowledge on the um, using laxatives. With binge eating, that's characterized by episodes of excessive food consumption, um, as in bulimia, unable to control the binging. The only difference is there's no purging in this behavior. And with anorexia, you, you have to be, you know, you have to make sure that when a person, a clinician, is diagnosing that disorder, um, there is something where it's, they go through uh, binging and purging episodes. So the main diagnosis is anorexia, but if they've ever binged and purged, then it's characterized as or diagnosed as anorexia nervosa with binge purging um, behaviors. There's like an attached diagnosis to that. Uh, so the psychological effects may include embarrassment about the quantity of food consumed, depression and guilt and overeating. So people with binge eating usually hide their food in their room. They put it in their drawers under their bed. Um, with bulimia, usually you can't even tell somebody has the disorder because they're binging and purging to kind of maintain their weight. But after time with this disorder, the face gets very bloated and um, it, you don't even, again, defeating the purpose. But it is a very sad psychological disorder. All right, so when we look at cross-culture, Western concepts of beauty, particularly female beauty, usually go hand in hand with thinness. Some cultures um, reflect, um, you know, acknowledging your body, appreciating the size of your body. Like in African American cultures, they very much appreciate their if they're if they're larger, they appreciate that. Unlike, um, you know, American concepts, Western, I should say. All right, so uh, with all this pressure to be slender, it's no wonder basically disorders like anorexia are commonly diagnosed in America, um, especially America. But you have it in Asian cultures as well, very much um, too. As a matter of fact, it's at a higher prevalence, believe it or not. Um, in recent de decades, eating disorders have been become increasingly common in non-Western countries. This trend often coincides with industrialization, urbanization, and of course, media really hypes up how important it is to be thin. Um, these disorders generally result from an interaction between many genetic, psychological, and environmental factors. 
All right, so over that, and we are finished in 25 minutes. Boom, it's 25 minutes now. So with that, we are done with psychological disorders. If you have any questions, there are psychological disorders that I did not cover because it is not in the realm of general psychology psych disorders, but there are multiple very interesting disorders that we could talk about if you're interested. All you gotta do is hit me up and let me know. Ooh. Teachers, if you hear wow. the fire alarm go off, please disregard. They are doing testing on it. If you hear the fire alarm go off, please disregard. We're going to disregard the fire alarm. Okay, but it's good because you're not going to hear it because we are going out. So, peace.